they called me the rabbit hunter. I got that name from a senator in the state, Senator John Astor. When I would go to these uh, wildlife meetings and he would come because he was head of the Maryland State Caucus. And he couldn't remember my name. And he said, oh, there's the rabbit hunter. And I like it, it's, it's cool because rabbit hunting is all I do. I don't hunt nothing else. I like to move, I'm an active person, I stay busy and I enjoy rabbit hunting. So I think the title is appropriate. I've been doing it since I've been eight years old, and I turned 69 last week. I grew up in a little town called New Roads, Louisiana, near Baton Rouge. My folks were Creole people, and we were tenant farmers. So at that time, everybody hunted. I learned from my older brother, uh, Francis. He taught me how to hunt and how to fish at eight years old, and I kept it up. And that's how I got started, and I stayed with it. Rabbit hunting used to be real popular when I was growing up because everybody did it, because it was, it was cheap, it was easy, you could take like an old Ira Johnson single barrel, and that's all we had. I think it's a childhood thing. When he was young, he had older brothers that took him out in the woods to hunt. When he first came up here for years, he didn't do it because the priority was the family. And then as the kids grew older, and started going to college, he decided, he said, Judy, I'm, I'm gonna get me my own dogs and I'm gonna set it up. So that's when he really showed the passion. And, and you can't measure the enjoyment. My hand is scratched, my, my clothes get tattered, but I go back because it's my passion and it's my joy. Today, we hunted my pack of beagles, Hank, Rattler, Bozo, Blue, and Sam. This is their first year of running together and they have been giving outstanding... I keep my dogs for a long time. Treat them well, even when they can't hunt anymore. Where some people trade dogs back and forth every year. So the dogs never get to really know the other dogs and they never really get to know them. I ask a lot of questions and I learn. The thing that get me riled up on the dogs working a cover is when they work in it in unison, everybody's working. They're just like a football team. Everybody's got a job and a position. And I have certain dogs that are, are lead dogs. And the first one hit the center and give that certain bark and the chase is on. I tell people a rabbit will make the best hunter and the best shot look bad on your best day. He's a tricky devil. Okay, he'll run straight back at you. He'll run around you, come in from the backside. There's no guarantee where he's coming from. So the best thing for you to do is find your clearing and stand quiet and just let him work and let the dogs work and hopefully you catch him when he makes a little fool of himself and you can put a number six on him or seven and a half. My preferred gun is a 20 gauge with a 20 six inch barrel and I shoot high brass number six. It's light, it's easy to swing, it's got good range, good knockdown power and it doesn't tear the rabbit up. It's a sweet shooting gun. Winchester Life is brought to you by Winchester Ammunition, the American legend. Winchester Repeating Arms. Winchester Safe. Birchwood Casey, Walkers, Folds of Honor, Shoot United, make the shooting sports part of your life. This segment of Winchester Life is brought to you by Birchwood Casey. Where you at, Jeff? When the dogs are on that rabbit, the rabbit obviously is running away from you and all you hear is the dogs going and they get further and further away. And then sometimes they get off the scent a little bit and then it gets real quiet. Hi now! That change between the noise of the dogs when they're on the scent and that quiet 
is just like the hunter's ebb and flow of things. So when you start to hear the, those dogs and you hear them coming back at you, your heart starts to pound and you get ready and it's just really exciting for a little rabbit. <laughs> I like to try to mimic Charles out in the field, and uh, he's, he gets those dogs going, and there are certain Charles-isms that I can't even come close to. Yeah, 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 here you go, here you go, yeah, 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 yeah. Charles has his own style of commands uh, that are a little bit more lively, I think, than, than most, and that's hey, part of the trait hey. of teaching on, the dogs to get excited about the rabbits. Yeah. It's, it's like a, a drill sergeant hey. telling his squad, what to do and giving certain command and cadence, they understand it. It's communication between them and me. Charles has taught us all to, to yell, dead rabbit, when we got one and we killed it and when everyone else then knows that it's dead. But we kind of mimic that a little bit after the way Charles says it too. He's extremely professional. He, the way he handles his dogs and the way he communicates with other hunters is something that I've uh, experience very few times in my life. It's an interactive experience, it's an educational experience, but always, always Charles is out to have a good time in the field. I can tell by the look of him whether it was a good day or a bad day. He talks and he relives it. He's got a memory of everything that goes on. So even after 60 some years, my heart still race. Now today, you can probably count the people who raise dogs and go out hunting. It, it has changed uh, quite a bit from the old ways where didn't see a whole lot and now. Rabbits are uh, increasing. You can see a whole lot, as long as they're good cover. Today, February 11th is my birthday. Many people like to sit around the house or go shopping on their birthday. The best present for me is a good rabbit hunt with friends who enjoyed himself equally as well as me. I've written probably 80 that have been published in. I get a joy out of writing them and describing the hunt, and I like to give the, the hunters a little publicity, and my goal is just to have a great enjoyment, something for them to have a memory and they can show people. And the fact that he writes rabbit hunting stories, I'm his editor, so I can tell you all the stuff they do outside, <laughs> just from reading the stories. I mean, he writes like he talks. And so it's, it's, it's nice to see him excited about it. Before I met Charles, February was the longest, coldest, short month of the whole year. Once I met Charles and we started to rabbit hunt, I have something to look forward to in February. So uh, it just makes it special because he's so singularly focused and so passionate about rabbit hunting. Charles is a true character in the field. He, uh, the way he talks to his dogs, the way he hunts, Everything with Charles is an absolute adventure. So for us who are fortunate enough to go on a hunt, hunt with him, it's always a special experience. I'm passionate about this. And my wife sometimes say, you're too serious. This is what I do. This is what I enjoy. He's a good husband. I tell people he's a good husband, especially after 46 years. <laughs> He and his wife will cook and bring food down to our office in Washington, D.C., just uh, out of generosity. He does a lot of volunteer work, very involved in the church. He's just a really decent human being. And I only eat a few of them. I give them all away. So a lot of people wait on them, and I don't charge anybody a penny for nothing. It's, it's so amazing. I mean, it can be the mailman, the shoe store, the guy to clean this. Some people, like, it's a memory thing. It's really fascinating to see the joy that people get from getting rabbits. He brings everything back to about being in the outdoors and enjoying the outdoors. He's one of the most real, sincere, uh, personal people I've ever met in my entire life. A friend who's not a hunter asked me, he said, man, how long are you gonna keep doing that stuff? I said, until I can't do it no more. This segment of Winchester Life has been brought to you by Winchester Safes. This segment of Winchester Life is brought to you by Walkers.
There you go. That's at 50 yards too, so if you just touch it off just a little bit more, it'll be all right. Yeah. That gun shoots sweet. Oh, I know. It shoots like a dream. The coyote light. All right. Ready? Yep. Okay, fire and all. We're good. There you go. That's it right there. Yep. Okay. Perfect. So we got that to reach out and touch them. We do have the shotgun. Are you gonna shoot that thing? Well, I mean, we might as well see what it's gonna do. Oh, that's what I wanna see what it's gonna How do. How are you not gonna test it? It's just gonna annihilate that target. Fire in the hole, I'm just gonna go with the dog. Center, center chest? Yeah. I mean, just center him up, yeah. right? Okay. Why? Fire in the hole. Ho! Oh. Oh. Oh, look at the look at the amount of BBs in there. That's awesome. That is amazing. I mean, that that dog's not going anywhere. I've never shot a shotgun at a coyote before, but that looks like it'll do the trick. With her gun sighted in, Chris and Casey Kiefer put their plans in place to dial in on Kansas coyotes. They've got their essential tools: a morning cup of coffee, a map outlining the region, a fresh box of Winchester Varmint X ammunition all the pieces to the puzzle of a prosperous hunt. The Kiefer brothers are locked, loaded, and ready. Joined by longtime friend Jason Brown, the group blends into the landscape. The distressed rabbit call echoes across the plains, a delicious sound to a hungry coyote. Casey's quick on the draw and gets one wild dog down this morning in Kansas. The crew come together to bask in the bounty, then head back to their spot to catch sight of coyotes. All right, you guys ready? Let's get this thing going there. Yeah, light him up. A little juvenile cottontail? Yeah. Hit him with that. That worked on that last one. Yeah. They liked it the last time, so let's do it a second time. Hey, if he comes in close, I'll try to let him come in and we'll shoot him with that scatter gun. Yeah, with that close. 12 gauge. He's gonna get close. Yeah. If he's out there and hanging up, just hammer it. Yeah. Yeah, I see him. Yeah, it's a coyote. He's coming right here. Oh, you see him spinning like he's spinning. The dog soldier. Oh, the dog soldier <laughs> brought him back. Awesome. How sweet was that? This segment of Winchester Life has been brought to you by Folds of Honor, providing life-changing scholarships to families of fallen or disabled military and first responders. Winchester Life is brought to you by Winchester Ammunition, the American legend. Winchester Repeating Arms. Winchester Safe. Birchwood Casey, Walkers, Folds of Honor, Shoot United, make the shooting sports part of your life.
the ways of Winchester stretch back to the earlier days of American life. A time when storefront doors and window displays were a welcome sign of commerce and offered a warm greeting for people strolling down the street. In the 1940s and 50s, general stores served as the central hub of each city. And Winchester was in the thick of it all. Along with gleaming firearms and trusted ammunition, the Winchester brand offered a diverse selection of everyday products. The passions of people helped conserve the past and transform memories into legends. Here in Illinois, Larry Seidner has helped pave a path towards the preservation of Winchester's history by recreating the classic look of a 1950s Winchester storefront. His home holds an impressive collection dedicated to the early days of Winchester. Every item Larry purchased whispers Winchester's story and shines a light on earlier days that helped build the business from the ground up. Though each item represents an important brick of Winchester's foundation, the true cornerstone of Larry's collection is the Model 42 shotgun. Created in 1933, the Model 42 was introduced as a scaled-down version of the Model 12 shotgun. Over 160,000 models were made before Winchester halted production in 1963, cementing this shotgun as a rare and cherished piece of Winchester's history. Today, Larry's proudly showing his collection of iconic relics to Jason Gilbertson from Winchester. They started making the 42 in 1933. Uh, they made four different grades. This would be the, the typical field grade, just a really good quality 410, two and a half inch shells, three inch shells. This gun was designed basically for the three inch shell. And these are all my engraved guns. Uh, this gun is pretty special. It's in the Model 42 book. This gun has every single option that Winchester made that you could get on the 42. It had, in fact, this one has the uh, Model 12 engraving, which has ducks on it, which is really unusual. So it has every option that they wanted. These are uh, some of my box guns in the collection. These are the, called the picture boxes and they were the first boxes that the uh, Model 42 came out with. And if you look at this one right here, this is a, their mid-grade gun. This is, this is their second grade, which is a skeet grade. And that's how they came, you know, from uh, 1933 on. And I, guess, I guess back then, too, they, I guess they had the glass cases like this, and they would just stack them up and yep. just walk in. And yep. Uh, the store, them. yeah, the store is supposed to duplicate a 1955 gun store, and this is how you see them. Yeah, yeah, this is the premier gun of the collection. This is President Eisenhower's uh, guns, a two-gun set. He used to hunt with a gentleman that had a plantation in Georgia, and he was the chairman of City Services Oil. And they hunted quail together, and they decided to buy matching guns together. And unusual thing about it is they're numbered one and two, which is really, you never see in a Model 42. And they're fully engraved, carved. Yeah, and it's just, it was just his gun, just a beautiful set, nicest set in the collection. History is held within the hands of the things we cherish most. These symbols bridge the gap between the past and the present the tried and the true. Times can change, but the values and the heart and the purpose remain the same. The dedication of passionate torchbearers help light the way, establishing timeless traditions that span multiple generations. Symbols of Winchester's history grow stronger thanks to those committed to preserving the past. A reliable reputation is not built overnight. By remembering who we were, we can stay true to who we are now and for many years to come.